Seahawks Weekly. Every Thursday at 7, live from Pearl Bar and Dining in Bellevue's Lincoln Square. Seahawks Weekly is brought to you by Heritage Distilling's Batch Number 12 Vodka, Legendary Donuts, Muckleshoot Bingo, and Pearl Bar and Dining. Seahawks Weekly on 710 ESPN Seattle. Uh, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> You're listening right now to Seahawks Weekly. We're live here at Pearl Seafood and Oyster Bar. Really appreciate everybody that came to join us this evening. Thank you so much. Uh, right now, I want a big thank you to our sponsors, Harris's Distillings, Batch Number 12 Vodka, Legendary Donuts, and Muckle Shoot Bingo. And joining us right here, live and in person, defensive end for your Seattle Seahawks, Mr. Frank Clark is right here with us today. Hey, guys. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Well, you got a playful today, man. I mean, that is, <laughs> that is the scary defensive end as you are on the field. You hear playful. Somebody did. First of all, somebody brought you a nice little care bear <laughs> with your numbers on the back. What do you think about that, Frank? I actually appreciate this. You know, it's the little things that count, literally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ian, Ian and Sarah have come to this uh, along with Angelo and Mikey. They've been here, coming here for like seven years. Mm-hmm. And she, every year, makes one of those for, uh, for all of us. And I've never seen her make one for a player. So you're very special. Yes, I actually thank her. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I really appreciate it. Where are you? Where is, Where is she? Where did she uh, go? She's in the bathroom. Oh, well, uh, when she comes back, I can shout her out. Yeah, there you go. Shout out. Oh, for All sure. right, Frank Clark. She now, deserves a shout out for now, this pair. I'm going to start off with a high expectation that this gentleman put on you Uh-oh. recently. Yeah. He told Must every- involve a number or something. <laughs> yeah, he told everybody <laughs> that Frank Clark was going to have a big season, so much so that he's going to have 15 sacks. That played all over the radio all day long. Sorry, we Frank. played it, replayed it. He put the expectation. When somebody puts an expectation of 15, what um, do you think about that? I mean, it's a it's a goal. You know what I mean? It, it's not you know something I think about often or the number really. When it comes to me, you know, and setting my goal, I just kind of really go out there every season. And really, what I've done since I've been in the league, I go out there every season with the mindset of doing better than I did the season before. So you know, last season was 10. Season before, my rookie year was, um, I believe, four. You know, and I just want to keep doing better and better every year as I progress in the league. Has the game slowed down to you? It's slow. It slowed down a lot. Um, I mean, that's that just comes with time. And you know, you start to understand that the more and more you go in the game, you start to understand, you know, your role more and more. You know, it's year three, so it's you know, it's a lot of things I understand now that I wish I you know would have known, you know, coming in as a rookie. But you know, it's all part of the process and it's part of the growth. What Frank, are, that that prediction was done out of love. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> what, what what are those things that you said? You know, from a, a progression, is it get off? Is it work in the hands? Is it just understanding formations? What what do you think the the biggest Main thing, jump? You know, you got to always the one thing. You know, Mike Mike Bennett and um, Cliff. You know, they they always harp on is you know, and the reason that they've all been in the league so long and they've able to been successful for so long is is because of the things they work on, and the things they continuously fine tune. You know, I actually had the opportunity to train with both of them out in, um, in Hawaii this summer. So we all trained together up, up um, we, you know, with Hop. And um, basically, you know, I got to see what they did. You know, I wanted to see what they did. I wanted to take so much from them before they got, you know, before they walked away from this game. You know, and I just wanted to see what they did and see, you know, the little things. Because, you know, I, I believe I have, you know, certain things down, you know, but it's the little things I know that, that gives you that, that extra push. It's the, that you look at Michael Bennett and you say, you know, he's probably one of the best technicians in the league, if not the best. You look at Cliff and you say, well, you know, he's been in the league going on 10, 11 years, and this guy has the best get-off in the NFL. You know, it's things like that that I, that I admire about, you know, the veterans in my room. That's pretty awesome, Frank. Yeah. And you see yeah. those, uh, like I was watching a slow-motion replay of the game, and, like, all of those things that you guys practice out there, you see Bennett and Averill yeah. doing those things, and it's just like an over and over and over thing. That you, that you see from those guys that they're you're going through and doing in practice every day. Yeah, it, you know it's it just it's awesome, you know, because like I it, it's bittersweet, you know, it's gonna be a bittersweet moment, but you know, because at that point, you know, I probably play with them four or five years, and you know, eventually they're gonna go on and you know have to move on with you know real life, but it's just like, you know, like I said, I just want to soak up so much from them and yeah. as much knowledge as I can. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a player going into my third year who thinks I know it all. I'm not a player who thinks, you know, I've, I've seen a little bit of success, and I'm not a player who thinks that's the, that's the, the, the peak. You know, I know, I know it's more. You know, I know it's more that people, you know, want from me. I know it's more my coach wants from me. 
I, you know, Pete tells me every day, you know, it's more, give me more, give me more. You know, it's, it's just a little bit more and me bringing someone else along with me next. We're joined here by Frank Clark here on Seahawks Weekly, and this is year number three yes. for you, Frank. And I think a lot of us, as we're listening to you talk, we're listening to you talk about you wanting to seek the knowledge yeah, from the I Mike Bennett in the clip favor. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you hot up here? We make yeah. you hot. I keep, off. I keep my hood. I, 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 I got a thing for black. It was the outfit. I, it was kind of one of those like female things. It was like I chose the outfit over, you know, the uh, weather. <laughs> you went for the look. I went for the look. See, my, All right. my wife is uh, like she, she sometimes will. It's uh, form like, over function. Oh. Yeah, there we go. No, Frank Clark playing. is up here sweating up here. I'm sweating. I hope that's not my bad breath is making you sweat like that. But anyway, so, but really quick, you know, hearing you talk about wanting to learn from them, has it, has it always been like that for you since you've been a rookie? Have you always soaked up the knowledge, or are you just now getting even more of an appreciation of those guys now that you're year three into the league? Honestly, you know, I think it's the, that part. The part you say when you say, you know, it's year three and it's the appreciation level. You know, coming as a rookie, you don't, I don't think n no rookie really understands the, the significance that their veteran plays in the locker room. Or, and especially, you know, you know, position based, you know. And for me specifically, Mike and Cliff, you know, the role that they played in me, you know, I came in, I'm a, I was a hard headed rookie. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to listen. You know, with the little things they say, they may say it in a joking way, but. It's a way, of, you know, it's their specific way of saying it, you know. Some people say it's serious, you know, another person may direct it in the joke, but in the, in the main thing, you know, that they wanted to tell me was that, like, I could be the fastest, I can be the strongest, all that stuff will go out the window at the end of the day. And back to the technique part, it, it, I'm going to have to fine tune, I'm going to have to get a rhythm, I'm going to have to get a schedule and get these things down packed and become an NFL player, you know. At the end of the day, you can, you can run around people in college using your speed and, you know, and things like that. But when you get to the league, it's different things that you have to always work on every year because every year everyone's getting better and better. You were, you know, the first two years. I mean, they played you inside, outside. You yeah. know, this year seems different. Um, you know, I, I can call it a million different things. I call it a bear front, an eagle front. I call it three, four front. Bottom line, I saw a lot of five-man front. A little bit of eye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, we had uh, Richardson up on the nose and like Bennett and, and Averill, and you guys ran a couple zone oh, yeah. things along the way. What does that do for you? Do, do you feel like, you know, I, I'm not putting words in my with Richardson there, you guys going to have a lot more one-on-one -on -one opportunities? I mean, that's the goal yeah. at the end of the day. I mean, but you, you, you think realistically, you got, you know, Mike, you got Cliff, and you got Sheldon. You know, you got these Pro Bowl guys. You know, then you throw me in the mix. They call me, you know, just the angry dog or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, those guys alone are going to attract a lot of attention. And it's only five men that can block at one, one time, six tight end, or, you know, seven with a running back. Um, we're just really hoping that we, we, get a, we get an opportunity to rush like we want to. We know, you know, this team's going to game plan against us. We know this team's going to come with a quick game. They're going to come with because they know we're coming. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a secret or a mystery. We know what we're capable of doing, and you know, we want to get it done. Frank, do you remember individual plays? Or is it like a blur to you? Or do, do you, is it, does it go fast or slow for you at the end of the game? I mean, it's weird. Because in the beginning of the game, it's, it's kind of, you know, for people who, some people lie. You know, they say they don't get butterflies. They don't say, they say they're not nervous. You know, this is me. This is, I'm telling you guys, you know, it, it's not, it's not really, it's your nerves. It's really your nerves, but it's not you being nervous. It's you, it, you can be excited. Because it's something that, to me, it's something that I've worked so hard for my whole life. It's something that I've prepared for. It's something that, you know, I go into the week of, you know, pre preparation starting on Monday. And, you know, you, everything is study, 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 study. We're in the building for 12 hours at a time. You know, you get in there at 6. You're not leaving sometimes at 7 at night, 8 at night. You know, you got to recover and take care of your body. And, um, you know, you do all of these things within this short week, you know, in, pre in preparation for one day. And that's Sunday. So you, you work for six days in preparation for one day, you know, and if a guy tells you that they're not nervous to, to showcase, you may, you may be nervous for how, for how excited you are to play, 
You know, I, I get I get excited just to play, and you'll see me jump off sides every once in a while. <laughs> Mike, Mike B is always very excited, if you know what I mean. I, I'm not name dropping or nothing, but that's my brother. I can do it. But um, it's just you, you get so excited, and it's like, you know, just to play that game. Us, even as, you know, men, I, I watch a guy, Cliff, you know, like Cliff, I watch guys like, you know, who've been in the locker room, Brandon Meebane. You know, these guys get excited, and it's great seeing them, you know, 11, 12 years in, how happy they get just to be at practice. You know, with a guy like me, I'm coming in 21 years old. And I'm looking at these guys, like, man, these old men, <laughs> I don't know how they can do it for so long. You know what I mean? It's, but it's, it's, it's motivation. You know, it, it shows me that, you know, me being young, that, you know, oh, this is what it takes. You know, it takes me having to, you know, take care of my body. I might, I might be tired after a game or practice, but, you know, I might need to follow Bobby Wagner and go get right in the cold tub after, you know, that game. It's just the little things, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, Frank, one of the plays I remember so well, and it was my favorite play of yours. It was last year in the Tampa Bay game, and it was like a it was a running play, and mm -hmm. they pulled a guard. And oh, yeah, it was I like remember. You hit a guard. You just <laughs> entirely blew the whole play up. And yeah, I, I remember like, that play. I think that was the best was defensive crazy. play I, I've, I've seen the, the entire year. And just the way you play it, it looks like you're just pumped full of electricity. I'm going to tell you, man, I, I don't I – don't, I don't believe in being scared when you when you somewhere. I, I call football like my place of sanity. You know, it's like it's like where I feel. I feel my you know I, I feel at peace with everything when I'm playing football. Yeah. On Sundays, on Saturdays, on Fridays. It's crazy how it went it went from Fridays to Saturdays to Sunday. But yeah. I feel at peace, and you know you you have a life outside of football where everything is like where everything is real. You got your kids, you got your family, you know, you deal with the problem, the negative, the positive. And then you got, when I'm able to go to work and I'm able to have something that I can do to take everything off my mind, just for a brief moment, because that's all I need. I'm yeah. fine with dealing with the stresses of life for, 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 for 20, 22 hours. Yeah. But when I can go to practice and I can be on the field for that two hours and just release everything, you know, and, and, just, and just have fun, you know, like, like I was a kid again, you know, that's right. the best part about it. Joined here by Frank Clark here on Seahawks Weekly. We all know about Frank Clark on the field. We know 55. We know how good you are on the field. What I want to do is pull back the curtains a little bit and talk about the Frank Clark that I've got a chance to see a little bit off the field. And I, what, I just want to know, why do you love kids so much? You have a weakness for kids. I see you at training camp. <laughs> I see you always stop. I remember there was this training camp. The little girl was crying. Oh, when you sat down on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Frank Clark, big, yeah. bad wolf Frank Clark, was on the ground sitting down with a little girl that was crying. Yeah. What is your effect? Why do you love kids Number so one, much? I was trying to figure out why she was crying. And then I figured out, you know, she's like, I'm crying because you haven't came and took a picture with me. And, I, and then it took me time to realize, you know, like, Wow, this is the same little girl, you know, I've been taking pictures with the last three years since I've been in the league. Ah. You know, I didn't realize that, you know, from the age of two to three, how much she had grown and had changed. So she's sitting on the floor as I'm walking out of practice. I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, I've waited, I waited all day to take a picture with you, and you haven't taken a picture with me. So that was that whole thing. And she but, had a little Frank Clark jersey yeah, on Yeah, it was the same jersey she's had since she was a baby, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's kind of crazy. But as but, far as me loving kids, man, I just, I mean, I grew up, you know, like a, you know, a lot of you know my story. I grew up rough. You know, I grew up in a, you know, very unfortunate. I grew up in shelters. And I grew up, you know, seeing things that, you know, kids not being able to be blessed with the lives that, you know, that they really, you know, should be afforded. You know, and it's not, I'm not saying everyone has the money to give kids a perfect life or, you know, these type of things. But I'm saying just kids being able to go outside and play. You know, kids being able to have a home. Kids being able to, you know, just wake up without that worry of what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to do next. You know what I mean? And those are things that I have to worry about. So when I see kids and I see, you know, they're innocent, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't really know right from wrong. You know, they, they taught what, you know, what we teach them and things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, I see kids and I just think, you know, innocence. And I think, you know, I think us as humans, you know, we're so, we're so consumed in everything that goes on in the world. That we don't take time and just, you know, reflect on the things like, like I always take back, like I always tell you, like, I just, I'm, on, I'm on the field, and I, I remember being a kid and having fun, you know, and having real fun. Before the money, 
before you know the, the fame, you know that guys get out of this. I just remember having fun. You know, you have a you have a unique way of connecting with people. We we notice yeah. it here. You you make eye contact, and you did something that we don't usually see, and that is you turn to the audience and you talk to them. I mean, you are connecting with them. Yeah. Um, I like people. Well, I was going to ask, where, <laughs> where, does that, cool. where does that come from? I mean, you know, you mm. said you can rough life, you know, the children, you know, don't always have, you know, the yeah. opportunities, but that connection, has that always been you? Um, I'd say, yeah, sort of. I mean, I, 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 I was a sheltered kid, and I sheltered myself, not really parents, because, you know, I didn't, I didn't really have, my parents were around, but I was kind of a kid who kind of made my life what it was. You know, if I got in trouble, it's like I'm in trouble. You know, it's like. But um, I say it comes from really just, you know, I think that, think, like I said, I think how blessed I am. You know, and just being able to talk to people and just share my story and be able to look at another individual, you know, and feel where they're coming from, or, or you know, be able to look at another a person in their eyes, you know, and be able to communicate. I think it's all just, you know, it's respect. Because at the end of the day, you know, you got I'm talking and you got all these people looking at me. It's yeah. them showing respect for the story that I'm telling. You know, it's great I, gift. I want to be able to look at somebody in their eyes and, you know, whatever they tell me, they can be telling me a story about their dog. And I want them to be able to say, he respected my story. Mm. Well, before we do let you go, here's Frank Clark today, 2017. If Frank Clark could write a letter to uh -oh. Frank Clark, his rookie season, what would you write in that letter to him? In that letter, man, three years later, I would probably tell him, like, I would write the importance. Let me, let me tell you all about this story. Started, started the second game of preseason. First injury. First injury. Broke, 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 broke my skateboard or something in my thumb, something I never heard of. <laughs> my trainers told me. I'm like, all right, tape it up. Let's keep playing, whatever. They're like, no, you offer the game. I'm like, all right, cool. Next week. Next week. I tear a ligament in my wrist, actually. My T um, ABC. Tear something in my wrist. I'm like, all right, cool. Tape it up. Let's keep going, right? <laughs> the next week, I'm actually down for Oakland, as you guys remember. I didn't play in Oakland. The first game of the preseason, I sprained something in my finger. And it's like, I would tell Frank Clark three years before, that he probably need to do more hand workouts to strengthen his hands. <laughs> <laughs> because at this point, I'm tired of wearing two, two, hand, two hand casts in practice. I'm tired of wearing them in the games. <laughs> I wish I can grip. I wish I can play my game more. <laughs> um, I just wish life was normal right about now. And, um, but no, all jokes aside, man, I would just tell Frank, you know, just to, you know, appreciate the little things. Because, you know, three years later, in the league, you know, it's, it's, it's people who I wish, you know, who I've told myself, you know, I wish, you know, that a lot of the things that come with the NFL didn't, you know, change the way they looked at me or change the way, you know, their approach is to me. You know, because I believe a lot of things changed as far as that. And especially three years, you know, later, in the, and, I, and, and you start to figure out, you know, the, the more successful you are in this league and the more, you know, success you have, it, it brings more people, you know, and it, whether it's family, whether it's friends, it brings more people, you know, whether they're good or bad, whether their energy is gr good energy or bad energy, whether they're, you know, high frequency or low frequency. You know, I, I just think that people, you know, they come into your life for certain reasons. And I believe that, you know, people should appreciate, you know, that those people that come into your life and, you know, you should get something from them. And that's what I would tell Frank, you know, be appreciative, you know, appreciate the things you do have, the little things. Like I said, the little things, you know, it's weird how it started, but it's the little things, you know, and it's something weird, but I don't know if she's... There's Sarah it, right there. But thank you, I appreciate this. You know, I really do, genuinely, because, you know, I remember being 12, 13 years old and having people who I look at, you know, I remember not having gifts and not having, you know, getting calls from people on my birthday. So it's the little things I do appreciate, you know, and, and you know, this is something that I'm going to have in my house, whether it's me having it or my daughter playing with it. I'm sure she'll go get her hands on it eventually. <laughs> you know, but I do appreciate this, and I thank you, you know. Well, there it is, everybody. That was Frank Clark, <laughs> defensive end for your Seattle Seahawks.